Alright, so hey, this is Yazuki Wolf, and I'm here with uh, Eric from Starcat Games. So, we are going to be making a game in Unity. And the thing is, if you are one of those people who are just kind of interested in making a game, but it seems very intimidating, you may have looked up a tutorial on making games and found that midway through you have no idea what they're talking about. And the, that may actually not be your fault, because I also, I'm not a professional programmer. I worked in the game industry, but not in the programming field. I've done programming completely as a, my own hobby. And a lot of tutorials, they talk to you as if you, are, you have a degree in computer science. And they just go on and on about like, okay, just we're going to do this function and do this function. And they never really explain the logic between what they're doing or kind of like break down how they're navigating the, the software. So I'm here with Eric and I'm going to be explaining to him how we navigate this software, how we go through Unity to make this game that, that he's come up with. And hopefully that will be helpful to you as well if you're just a person out there who doesn't have an advanced computer science degree and ha don't have a huge amount of experience in programming and you're just interested in making games and you heard that Unity is a good software to use but you're kind of intimidated to get inside of it. So um, that's the quick intro. Let's go ahead and get get to it. So this is just the the default Unity um, what do you call it file that I that I made and I called it the arena because we're going to be making a sort of like I guess a a grid based um, a grid based combat game and so this is completely empty all we have in here is I have I made an art folder here if you don't know how to make folders you just right click on the on the screen and you'll have a see here, where is it create at the top and then you have folder so it's very much the sim similar to just like your basic Explorer in in your in uh, Windows where you just right click and hit new and here it's right click create and then folder and you can create any folders you want in the project now one thing to keep in note to about well, to note I guess is that this layout that we have here it's not set in stone like everything in unity can be changed around depending on your preferences so like this project I can move it to this side I can move it back to where it was um, I could, this is the hierarchy. I can move all this. So I could, all these things are not dependent. Like the the area that they're at is not set in stone. There's a lot of different layouts that can be possible. I think it's just important to remember what each one is. So first off, we have the hierarchy. Hierarchy. You'll see here. This is sample scene. So this is just um, the opening scene that you're the default that you have in Unity. And these are all the things that are in your scene. Um, you know, I'll, I'll explain these a little bit more once we actually have some actual objects in here, because since with no objects, it's really hard to, to kind of visualize. But just keep in mind that hierarchy is what's in our current scene. Project is the whole project, so not just the scene, but everything that you're using in your game, like entirely, you're putting in, is going to be in this project area. Um, tiles, this, you might actually not have this. This is just left over from, from when I was doing a grid, uh, doing a tile grid. I don't think we actually need this right now. Maybe I could close that. Uh, window. I'm not sure how to close it actually, so we'll just keep it there, I guess. Uh, okay, I can just move it to here. We'll ignore that for now. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. Were you speaking before that? No, I just switched. All right, testing one, two, three. All right, that's better. Yeah. All right, so th so basically, this is the default um, project in Unity. The only thing I've I've added to this is I've added. Uh, folder here called art under the assets folder and this is just where I put the art that Eric gave me for his game we have here a few characters we have actual background and this is another back I think this is actually just a reference I don't think we're actually gonna use that in the game it's I guess let's go ahead and get started I guess it's since it'd be easier to explain stuff when we actually have stuff on the screen to see so the first thing I think we're going to want is we're going to want that background. So I'm going to click on the background that you gave me, and we're just going to drag and drop this into the hierarchy. Once again, the hierarchy is the current scene. So this is where everything is taking place in the game right now, I guess. So I just drag and drop that, and now we have our background. Now the first thing you might notice is that there's a little camera mark here, and the square of the camera mark is actually smaller and not the same size as the background. And you can see that better if you go to the game tab on the top here. This is what you would actually see in the game. And we can see right now that it's 
cutting off a lot of what we actually want to see. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to get this scene to be the right size. Um, the size of the arena, you can see here, uh, one quick thing also, this is the inspector on the right hand side, you'll see me looking at the right hand side a lot because this is where you get the detailed information of whatever you're clicking on on the other side. So if I click on the main camera here, this is all the detailed information about the camera. If I click on an art asset, this is all the information about that art asset. So back to this, the size is 1280 by 960. So we're going to go to the, uh, where is it? Is it a game? Ah, oh, yeah, under game, we have display one, iPhone five, you see here. This is actually going to be the ratio of the, of the scene. So we want it to be 1280 by 960. And you'll see here that we don't have that option here. It's like 1024, 720. We don't have the exact size that we want. We could actually just add it. So if I out go here and I add, I can do it manually, 1280 by 960. And this is, a, I guess, a fixed resolution, a label. We'll just call it Arena, I guess. And hit OK. All right, so now, huh, that's interesting. It's a little bit bigger for some reason. Is that supposed to be that way? Hold on. Hmm. So it says 1280 by 960, but apparently we're a little bit, this it's a little bit bigger than we need it to be. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I think as long as we see the whole scene, I guess that's okay for now. I mean, if we if it, if the blue background bothers us, we can go to main camera, and the main camera is going to have a color, a default color that it has for the background for anything that there is no actual any where there isn't anything in the scene. So I don't know. We could change it to black for now, I suppose. So now we have our background. The next thing you want to do is you want to have our character in there. So I'll get, I guess, the wizard for now. Drag and drop him into the scene. And we don't see him here because he's not in the camera's view. But if we click back on the scene tab, and you can double click on the um, the thing in the uh, hierarchy that you want to see, and it will actually zoom in on it. So we see now that there is a box, but we can't see him because he's behind the background. So let's see if we can figure out how to fix that. I think it might be the sorting layer. Um, if I put him to one, there it goes, okay. So for now, we'll say that we want our characters to be a higher priority than the background. So we'll keep the background at zero and the, the characters are gonna be one. And that's, once again, that's in, when you click on your character it will have under the sprite renderer that's it will have the sorting layer and then order in layers one um I'm, I'm trying to like filter how much i explain because if i explain everything it'd be too overwhelming but this but so there's two ways we could do it one is right now they're all in the same layer but the um the character has a higher priority so that's why they're showing up Another thing you could do is if you kept it at zero, you could actually make a brand new layer. So I could add a sorting layer and call this layer, say, characters. Uh, I hit the plus button here to, to add. So character. And now I think if I click back on the on the the wizard, I should have. Yep. Yeah, now we have default and we have character. So if I click on character, now character he'll be he'll be in the character layer. So does that make sense? You have layers and then you also have order within layers. So you could have like the background layer which will be behind the character layer but then within the character layer you can also have like two different uh, orders. So you could have like player characters as or as zero and like enemy characters as one and that will allow the enemy characters to, to be in front of player characters if that's something you want to do. Or Does that make sense? Like if a character wanted to eat another or something. Right, and you wanted to show that one is in the front when it, while it's eating, you know. Right. So let's see, that's pretty good so far. Next thing is we want to line this character up. Now I'm just clicking on the character and there's like a little um, circle here. I, I guess it doesn't really matter, I guess you click anywhere. All right, so anyways, you click on the character and I can move him around. Another way you can move him around is in the 
inspector, there's something called transform. Transform is basically just their position in space. So there's a X, Y, and Z. X is going to be left and right. Y is going to be up and down. Z is like depth, but since this is 2D, there is no depth. Right. We're just going to keep that as zero. Um, and you could click on here and you could type where you want them to be. Zero, zero, zero is going to be the uh, probably the center. It's going to be exactly at, at exact, exactly center unless you set it up otherwise. Um, same thing with rotation. You could does rotation work here? No, maybe not. Oh, why? Uh, I guess I don't know if maybe I can't rotate uh, sprites. I don't know, I'll look into that later. But anyways, also you have like scale. So if I wanted to be twice as big, um, one is a hundred percent, two would be two hundred percent. So you can make them twice as twice as large. Although I I actually probably wouldn't do it in there. I would do it directly in the sprite. But just so you know, that's how this stuff works. Um, another thing is if you put your mouse over the X or over the Y, you can actually drag it and just move it like this instead of having to like type everything manually. Handy to know. So let's try to move him to maybe the bottom left so we can figure out exactly where the bottom left of this uh, arena is. And it should be exactly 50 by 50, 50, by 50 pixels, so it should line up like so. And we see it's negative 3.542. It probably doesn't have to be that. Let's see here, maybe 3.5. No, no, 3. Point. See, I'm guessing it's, we don't want it to be exactly. Well, maybe maybe it actually is 3.52. Minus 3.542. Does that look about? Yeah, this is the only part that it's kind of difficult to do the exact thing because the um, the actual background isn't isn't made exactly to fit. But I think that's pretty good, as far as I can tell. And it is 50 pixels, but we the don't... The only way that you would tell is if you tried to make it move all the way across the screen and it worked, right? Yeah, so that's the next thing I was going to do. But before we do that, we have to figure out exactly how much we have to move him. So in order to make that a little bit easier, put him inside of a... Right now it's negative three, four, six, four. It's a really confusing number. I'm gonna I'm gonna make that zero. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to make a empty object. So you can right click on here in the hierarchy and create empty. And now you have just an empty game object. Another way you could do that is you could just hit Control Shift N. This once again that's Control plus Shift plus N, and that will also make it an empty game object, which is you can do any time and again em empty game object is it's it's just like the wizard there's an object in the game but this one's empty so it's completely it's just invisible there's nothing to it um where would if i could double click to see exactly where it is yeah it's completely in invisible so what i'm going to do with this okay, this object is i'm going to make the empty the empty game object this number okay and to co you could actually just click on these dots here and copy component and it will copy these these values so now when I go to the game object I'll paste that and now that will be exactly so to make this a little bit more viewable the game object I can actually make it so you can see it right now it's invisible but if I click on this icon in the upper left I can make like a little icon to show you where it is oh, nice. so now this is not in the game so in the actual game you won't see anything but just as sort of like a reference so that you know where this empty object is now you can see the little icon for it and so now this is at this position and if I drag the wizard into that game object and now the wizard is going to be he's he the wizard is now at the exact same position as that game object so the wizard is now zero 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 because he's at the center position of the game object that he's inside of does that make sense so you basically created another game object to use as a reference Mm -hmm. point reference and it might be confusing calling it a game object because it's just it's completely empty so we don't instead of calling it a, I mean it is a game object in terms of unity terms but you don't have to think of it as an object you can almost just think of it as like a folder that I'm putting inside of okay. uh, I'm actually Basically, I'm gonna call it grid thing, but you're, you're just using it to get the numbers easier exactly and I'm gonna call it grid because this is actually gonna be useful in the future that we're gonna keep we're going to store the entire grid inside of this so I'm going to call it grid I just renamed it oh and okay. in case anyone doesn't know how to rename you just click on it and then click on it again and it will give you <coughs> click once click twice 
and it will give you the um, ability to change the name. You can also just like a folder in Microsoft. Yep, you can also change it from the right side here on the top. But okay. Okay. So now that we have him here and it's zero zero zero, we can figure out exactly how much we have to move him to the X position to the next X position. <clears throat> it's fifty pixels, but I don't think these are pixels in Unity. I don't know exactly. Yeah, fifty is way too much. If I did like five, that's way too much. Here, let's actually just take the wizard and drag him a little bit. All right, there we go. It looks like it's about zero point five. Yep, there you go. So zero point five. So how many squares have we got? We got one. Do you, do you know offhand how many squares it was on the bottom? <coughs> okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So it's twenty squares. So if I put them back at zero, we should be able to move twenty squares that way, which I believe is twenty times zero point five would be what, ten? Oh, he went one he went one more. But I think that's actually correct. I think if because if you, he, because this one doesn't count, it's like it's counting one, it's counting from one, so that that actually makes sense. I think it should be 19 squares then. He, he moves 19 squares. Does that make sense? There's 20 squares total, but he's only moving 19. So if you hit 19, it should put him right at the edge. Where did he go? He was like, I am out of here. Oh, because it's not. Wait, wait, what, what did I do wrong? Yeah, it's not 19. It's so. It it was ten, so we want we actually want um, what is it nine point five? I think it's nine point five. Nine point five. Yep, there you go. So now he's exactly at the corner. And now another really another cool thing. I was <clears throat> I was just doing the math there because it was it was a very easy number to calculate. But if it was a little bit more difficult, another thing that you can do is in the X, I could actually just say I want him to move nineteen squares, right? But each square is 0 0.5. So 19 times 0 0.5. And there you go. It gives you the answer. So you can actually do the math inside of the inside of here if you if you don't want to do the math in your head. Right. How centered is he? He looks pretty centered to me. Yeah, it looks pretty okay. point on. Since it was 0 0.5, I'm guessing that it's probably each it's one is probably equal to like 100 by 100, I think. And that's why 50 is 0 0.5. I'm assuming that's probably the best math. Once again, I'm not a trained mathematician, so and I'm also not a pr so right. people well, could check me. This later if it needs to be. Yeah, but it looks it looks pretty spot on. And then if going up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, we would go up 13 squares. So we're going to go up 13 squares in the y, and once again, it's oh, 0 0.5 per square. There he is. All right, so it looks like looks like it's good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him back to the zero point. And now the hard part is the diagonal. Um, well, I mean, since those two lined up, it should be perfectly fine. But for diagonal, let's see what would we do. Um, like what diagonal would we want to do? Like maybe th three to the. I'm gonna go. Th we'll do like three squares. Right and three squares up. Does that sound good? There he is. What do you mean? Well, um, since we have the since he's on the right position, that everything after that is just going to be a matter of adding um, zero point five. Uh, how, <laughs> sorry, let me let me re slow down. So if you want him to go right, we just have to <coughs> add zero point five to the x, right? Right. So that's zero point five to the x. If we want him to go up, we just add zero point five to the y. That's so 0.5. So if, now, if we want him to go up and to the right, you just have to add 0.5 to the right and 0.5 up. Oh, clever. Yep. yep. So the the, the diagonal is actually not too hard. Stuck all day on. That. <laughs> yeah. like, How do I add the little few to make him go to the right? Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Okay. I dig it. I dig it. But now the difficult thing is actually to do this with code, right? Instead of us typing it into here. So I guess we'll jump into the code now, unless there's anything else we need to do. Anything else we need to set up before code? I don't. I don't think so. So I guess for me personally, maybe other people, if, if any, you know, is watching this that that is in my position. Um, yep. I am a person of order. Mm -hmm. So for me, I kind of like to have the beginning scene set up where I select the arena and then go from there. 
but since this is the crux of the game, I assume this is where you would want to normally start. Yeah, I generally start at the actual gameplay part because the the like title screen and all all that stuff, it's it can be it, it can be done at any point. It doesn't have to be done at the beginning. And also for me it's a little dry so it, I, I find that if I try to start a new project with the title screen I lose my motivation my motivation a lot earlier a lot earlier whereas if I start with actual things moving and, and stuff happening it gets me more into like it into the flow of things I, I completely understand we can do that time. oh but so like if you if you did want to know the basics about that so the scene that I mentioned earlier it might be unclear what a scene is this scene right now is the battle scene. So if we had a title, then that would be an, a brand new scene we would have to make. And while, while we're at it right now, yep, we could actually, I guess we'll keep it called sample scene, but I'm not, now let's change it. So I'll click on that and let's we'll change this to battle scene now. Battle scene one. The following scenes have been changed. Hold on a second. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I'm not sure if I should do that while I'm still in the scene. Oh no, it looks like it's okay. All right, yeah, let me just double-click to make sure. Yep, we're good. All right, so battle scene. I mean, you could say one, but... Yeah, I guess that... I guess we're just going to use this for all the arenas for now. Yeah, we'll figure out the uh, the structure of that later. There's so many ways you could do it. Like, you could have just one battle scene that has sort of like um, um, like an info card. I, I'll, I'll just call it for now. It, it, we call it... It's a scriptable object in, in Unity, but we'll just call it like an info card that just tells the scene what's background to load so it's always just one scene but when you load the scene it will look at the info card and be like okay they want this background or they want that background right. so they could do it all in one scene or maybe the easier way for when you're just getting started out is to have a different scene for everyone like you said battle scene one battle scene two and so forth so okay. but we could change the name at any time once we figure that out how we want to handle that um so i think that's a good start to get actually start getting into the code um Anything else before we do that? Nope. Nope, okay.